for another video question. All right. Mr. President, as a physician, I know that the cost of defensive medicine drives medical costs upward. Now, at your health care forum, you said that you wanted to find out what works. In my home state of Texas, we know what works, and our Medical Justice Act has done just that. Now, unfortunately, when you recently told the AMA you were opposed to capping non-economic damages, even though a state like mine has proven that it does work. Now, will you reaffirm your commitment to find out what works and then ask Congress for its implementation? Okay. Uh, I, I want to make sure everybody understands uh, the, the question here. Uh, a lot of doctors have argued, and in some cases they're justified, that their costs for medical malpractice insurance, the threat of a lawsuit if something goes wrong with a patient, even if it's not their fault, is so high that not only is it increasing their out-of-pocket costs, but they're also engaging in what's called defensive medicine, that they've got to order five tests when one's enough just to make sure that they're covered so that if something goes wrong that's not their fault later, they can say, look, I did everything possible, even if a lot of that isn't required. And so the argument is, if you cap the, the pain and suffering the, or, or the liability that, that is awarded as a consequence of you, know, you being hurt uh, in the hospital or by a doctor, that that would drive down everybody's costs. Now, what I've said is that I don't like the idea of an artificial cap on somebody if the doctor or the hospital really was negligent. And in some cases, we've, I've got to tell you, they are. I mean, there are cases where, you know, folks leave a sponge in your gut and sew you back up, and <laughs> after a while, you're feeling worse than when you went in. And, you know, in some cases, obviously, that can cause very severe damage, and I want to make sure that people's uh, pain, suffering, out-of-pocket expenses, that those are covered. So I don't like the idea of just an artificial cap. I do want to work with doctors to find ways that we can reduce their liabilities where they haven't done anything wrong, when, where, where they've uh, performed effectively. I want to see, are there ways that we can reduce the constant threat of lawsuits that doctors and hospitals experience? Because I do think that that causes defensive medicine. And so I've committed to working with the AMA to see ways that we can reduce uh, some of these litigation costs and malpractice rates. One point that I've got to dispute, though, with the gentleman who asked me the question. He says he's from Texas and that we've got caps in Texas, and so we've seen what works. Well, the fact is, is that there was just recently an article about a town called McAllen, Texas, where they have the highest health care costs in the country. It's down by the border. And even though they have caps there in McAllen, Texas, they spend about three times as much per person as they are not. They, they spend about 30 percent more per person than they do in El Paso, Texas, which also is operating under caps. So what that tells me is the problem of rising costs doesn't simply have to do with whether or not you know, liability is capped. What it really has to do with is the incentives that are operating in various communities. There are some places, like the Mayo Clinic, many of you have heard of, provides outstanding care, some of the best in the world. People fly in from everywhere to go to Mayo Clinic to get treated. Turns out Mayo provides care much more cheaply than a lot of other health systems, even though it's better care. And part of the reason is they do some things that are commonsensical, but unfortunately we don't do in the health care system. For example, instead of you going to one, your, your, your primary care physician, who has you do a bunch of tests, then refers you to a specialist who has you do a bunch of tests, then maybe you go to a third specialist, another bunch of tests, get, go to the hospital, they retest you. What they do is, at Mayo Clinic, when you meet with the, your primary physician, he calls in all the specialists all at the same time. And as a team, they evaluate you, do all the tests right there, so you're not duplicating a whole bunch of stuff, and that coordinated care drives down costs tremendously. That's the kind of common sense approaches that we're going to have to take. And 
one, one of the things that we're going to need to do in the health reform that we're proposing is to incentivize those kinds of smart practices, coordinating care, as opposed to what we do right now, which is we just pay you the more services you provide, the more we pay you, which gives doctors and hospitals a pretty strong incentive to test you five times instead of one time. I'm not saying they do it consciously, but right now we're preventing them from coordinating in a smart fashion because of the ways that we reimburse. That has to be part of the reform that we initiate. All right. All right, Mr. President, I'm getting the high sign, so how about one more question from our wonderful audience? One more question audience. from the audience. Let's see. It's a girl's turn, isn't it? I think so.